got a great show for you tonight with our guests, Scott Clifton and Matthew Atkinson. Hey guys, how's it going? What's up? They're in those little bubbles down there. Um, We're in the tiny little bubbles. Tiny little bubbles. Hey, so um, um, it was. A, I felt like it was. This was a long week, uh, but we got through it. Okay, and I'm not, hearing feedback, and I think the feedback's coming from Scott's computer. Uh, computer. Don't you agree, Matt? Yeah, Scott. Scott, turn your computer uh, audio down just a little bit. I think your mic's picking it up. If, well, now I can. I can't hear you guys. Well, we're going to all figure this out and as we go live in three, two, one. Boom. Here we are. I'm so excited to see you guys. Scott, how, what are we? We're figuring this out. And Matthew, I don't know how looking good stuff. What? You know, we're, we're going to figure this out. It's, it, it, I think that Scott's just got a little, he's, he's, see, here's the thing about Scott. Yeah. He doesn't know how to use anything. Um, but he looks beautiful doing it. And so we just have to watch him and figure out what he's trying to say. I think if, uh, if I knew, knew how to use these lights, lights look more beautiful. But Scott, this uh, is the second time you've been on the show or third time. I don't know. And you've, time. every time has been great. Was, was, I, I, I have a wife and a kid and I have to like go find a different, different place to buy it each time time. So both other times I've, I've been like, in a, I've never even done this at home. <laughs> Before. If it's any consolation, I have like uh, I have a whole lighting setup, and I have a podcast mic and everything, and I just got on my iPhone and put my AirPods in because <laughs> I felt like I would screw it all up and not be able to set it up in time. I need like three or four run-throughs before I try it. So we should have all just gone to your out. house, Matthew. Well, yeah, that would have worked great, or we could have you know done it on set. No, people like it on this. They we have to be in our own little boxes. Oh, okay. We'll stay in our lane then. But hey, I want to say hi to everybody who's uh in the room here watching our bold live. Um, Angela, Michael, Kyle, Kevin, Melissa. Uh, I appreciate you guys all here today. Yes, Kimberlyn uh is saying uh last time Matthew, you were in your car on on a road trip, and you sounded great. That's right. Oh well, like ninety percent of the time that that we are going to do these things, if if I'm not if I'm not shooting, then I'm probably out of town, sitting in my car somewhere at a traffic stop. But it, that actually worked out really well last time. It was a lot of fun. Well, all right. So, Scott, what's where? What's happening? I'm still completely per perplexed at how this this. I have so many light lights me right now, and I'm the I'm the dark. Do you don't guys know, remember don't... that character Max Hedrum? Head, you know, like. Uh, and it was like a fictional AI character. It was like it was a it was a TV show. You're kind of like the Max Hedrum because he would always kind of repeat himself. I would always, would always repeat my I would always always repeat myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you that mean? Oh, this will be fun. Oh, it, so it, as we're we're like getting the show warmed up, video. Scott, why don't you you know on set the actors are boomed with a mic. They also get a mic. Um, you know, it's called a, a, a RF. But when they have to do a test, they always ask Scott to do a sound check. And Scott has oh, yeah. a pre-recorded sound check script. Would, would you like to share that no, with all of us? Always the same thing every time. It's I say what's on the Budweiser, Ken. This is the famous Budweiser beer. We know we know of no brand but the brewer which costs cost so much to make. Our exclusive Beachwood aging produces a taste, a smoothness, a drinkability you'll find in no beer at any any price. Budweiser, king of beer and beers. That's what I say every time. We, every time we do sound check because it's just something I can rattle off really quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm an alcoholic. You know, it's, what's pretty amazing is it sounds like that we're actually in a football stadium while you're saying that because of all the echo. It's pretty awesome. Is there, is there still a bunch of echo? Is that my fault? It's still 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 a bunch 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 echo echo. Rebecca says uh, you're still echoing, but <laughs> hey, so Casey, what? you got to send a, a link to these things within three minutes minutes before. You know what, then. Scott? I'm gonna say I'm gonna send you a new link because sometimes that might okay. fix it. All okay. right, I'll try. Okay. All right. This is like it's like when you uh, when you take the little video game out of the machine and you blow on it and you stick it back in and hope it's gonna work. Who knows? Wait, did. You do that with Nintendo or different? Yeah. You yeah, do, yeah. No, you do that with Nintendo. I'm saying that this is this is the How equivalent did we learn of that. You're that just literally trick. unplugging him and replugging him in. That's all we're trying to do right now. 
But how did we learn that trick that you had to like blow on the cartridge and like put it back in the machine? For, we thought for some reason like dust particles were what was met. Like we had nothing else to do. What else are you going to do with the little cartridge? It's like you right. pull it out, you blow on it, and then you stick it back in. And somehow it works. And I remember it makes a more secure connection. I remember, you know, I was very young when Nintendo came out and then you had to like kind of put it in the um, the controller thing just so perfectly. I'm sending Scott the link and um, I would get the game to come on and then my brother would play it like, wait a minute. I got the game working and now you're playing it. So we're waiting right. for Scott to come back. Uh, Matthew, you were you were working here today. Um, Matthew, let me ask you this question. Do you prefer Matthew or Matt, or does it not matter? Okay, so you asked me this last time I was on. You run out of questions? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't care. My friends call me Matt. Uh, I went by Matthew because I thought it – I was like, oh, uh, my name's going to be on, on billboards everywhere, and I thought it looked better. Like Matthew Atkinson. I, I felt like it was too short to be Matt it was like a little off center like you could put a center line down the middle of the poster and have one of my names on each side that was my thought process hey we got scott do you do you have scott yeah. let's find that out uh well, tell me i can i can you hear are you doing it on your computer do... or your iphone i'm a, i'm a, i'm a i'm on a desktop top computer with lights and a, and a giant mic microphone and the cameras and, and everything and i just i don't i don't know why um i'm sorry can we do it on a can we do it on your phone yeah okay i'll try that i texted bye. you the link <laughs> oh bye this is this this started great so um so casey how's how's it up there on the third floor you know, we are, you know, that is where I'm in. I'm in the Bold and Beautiful production office uh, above stage 31. And uh, we love it when you come visit. I love visiting. I love giving you crap and, and talking about the storylines and telling you what I want to be in and you not listening to me at all. Um, uh, Historia Sanchez says, uh, Matt, I can tell by your guns you've been working out. Oh, uh, I, I got some guns. I probably shouldn't pull them out. I might scare a few people, but uh, they're not on me right now. No, your <laughs> biceps. I know, I know. I was just making a joke. Uh, yeah, uh, well, you know, they, they're they are taking my shirt off all the time right now. So yes, you got to stay in shape. But I'm not looking as good as uh, as this guy or right, right over here. Olivia says, Scott, keto. you need some earbuds to cancel out the echoing. See, see Matthew's wearing earbuds. Okay, I'll go get earbuds. It's All like, right. hey, see what your brother's doing. Do what your brother Jesus, does. Jesus, come on. This is infinitely better lighting. You look way. You is, look way yeah, better. So much better. Phone. Yeah. What is? That's crazy. That's, I think it. I think um, it's the camera on your on your desktop. That was something about it. And maybe it's just not tuned right. Or wow. Whatever. Yeah. It is. It is the built-in like iMac camera, which I don't. You know. Okay. I'll be. I'll get some uh, air. air airpods sorry for wasting yeah. everybody's time mona no, wants to know what what time. room are you in matt what room is that oh this is my office at, at my house um it's it's coming together slowly i put the uh so that just used to be like a uh there was nothing there and i put the barn doors up to kind of create a closet because it's basically just like an indention there um i haven't replaced the fan yet but it's coming together but yeah this is my office at home well um if you're just joining us, welcome to Bold Live. This is Bold Live with uh, Matthew and Scott. Scott is uh, having technical problems, so he'll he's figuring that out. But we have Matthew here. Hey, well, he's looking a lot better uh, now. He's he does look better, parts. so that's good. Um, uh, Cavanator says, we love seeing you shirtless, Matthew. Thanks. <laughs> And uh, Scott, if you were here, Deanna says you're even more handsome live. Too bad you missed that. Scott is more handsome live. Okay. Um, Let's we try go. this. Uh-oh. Interesting. Oh, I love this. This is amazing. This is so great. Now, it's um, what's, what's funny is... Uh, hey, there you go. When... Scott plays, uh, when he came to the show, he played Liam Cooper, an IT uh, professional. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I don't think it sounds like you're talking smack. We can't see anymore. I don't know what happened to our video feed. It was working. All right. Oh, there he is. Video, audio. There he is. Hey, Scott. Wait. Hi. Hold on. Wait. Uh, Now I got to do this noise cancellation thing. Okay. You know, unfortunately, okay. that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for coming. Bye, everybody. No. That's so nice seeing Thanks everyone. Thanks for tuning in. You know what? Okay, uh, bye. We're going to get to the phone lines because let's get to these fan questions right now. I'm opening the phone line. Please call in. You haven't even done anything yet. Wait, we're going straight to the phones? Well, I mean. Yeah. Matthew wants to debate politics and religion. Come oh, on. no. Yeah, we got to go said- to the phone lines. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Jesus we talked Christ about this Lord before. And, uh, repent and believe the gospel. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. Welcome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, uh, Liz from uh, Delaware County. Hey, hey Liz. Liz. How's it going? Uh, all right. I got to say two cool. things. Liam Bring it on. has to stop being a load man. <laughs> And wait, wait, what was that, Liz? Liam has service. to what? Who who has to stop, stop being, the being a Logan man? Stop being a Logan oh. man. Going after yeah, all of Logan, Logan man. <laughs> and that's not a good I, I'm pretty sure him. I've only I've only <laughs> slept with one Logan. I I, I think. <laughs> no, I'm so not far. Let me. Not, but I'm only, you know. The Logans tend to get around. You know, Ridge has been through like half of them, so you're gonna, you'll go through a few. Okay, what's your other thing, Liz? Rich, is um, is Thomas ever gonna get a love interest? Mm. Casey, yes, Liam. Liam, that would be great. Let's just do that. That'd be no, Thomas, he needs to like. Well, you know, and it's funny, I, I, Liz. I I do agree, and you know what, Casey uh, needs to uh, lay his, uh, put his foot down. I Google I Googled one. Thomas <laughs> today. This is all about Thomas Forrester. But do you realize how many times yes. have you have do you, Liz, do you know how many times Thomas has been married? I've been watching for so many years and it's so much drama. Right now it's Brooke and Bridge and Taylor and No, but but I'm Thomas is, Thomas has been married twice. Yeah, oh, we had Casey. Caroline, right? Yeah. Yeah, Gabby. How many times? And Caroline. But how many times has, has Matt as Thomas been been married? Oh, just the one. And it was a faulty wedding. It no, no, you married wedding. Hope. You married Hope. It got annulled, and then no, no, it got well, annulled that, yeah. like a week later. Yeah. And then yeah. you took Zoe to the yeah. altar, but it never even actually got off the ground. Right. And, and oh. yeah, it was yeah. There was no actual but real Caroline love was, interest ever. <laughs> but Caroline was his was Douglas's mom, so they were they were married. They didn't get they weren't yeah, well, married. They didn't they didn't get married. But he married his dad. Were, uh, she married his yeah, dad. Yeah, see, I know. Yeah, she, she married. Married. She, she married. She married Rich. Rich. Yeah, she yeah. married Thomas's dad, but, but Thomas were, had the baby with Caroline. And there was talk where Douglas. They didn't know if Thomas or Rich was Douglas's father. No. So what is your what is your issue with Liam being a Logan man? I just don't I, I don't know. I just I like the forest or you just don't like the Logan, Logans. <laughs> Should he well um and yeah. where is Delaware County? Is that in Delaware? Yeah, it's in Pennsylvania. Well Oh yeah. it's in Pennsylvania. Delaware County's in Pennsylvania. That's confusing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Pencil- Pennsylvania counties in Delaware. I I know this game you're playing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, Liz. It's Philadelphia, it's Delaware County. Liz, thank you for calling in. Uh, did you ask a question? Is Thomas going to get a love interest? Casey, well, that's a question about future story, Liz. You know you can't ask those questions. Yeah. No, um. Oh, I think. <laughs> We trust me. We all, we all, and I, when I say all, I mean literally everyone except for the writers' room. I don't know what they're saying because I'm not involved in the writers' room meetings. But everyone 
has reiterated that point that, that Thomas should have a love interest. So hopefully we'll get one soon, right? Yeah. I hope keep, so, because I'm going to pick I like to keep Thomas. watching, Liz. <laughs> oh, I do, every day, for decades. Thank you so much. Thanks, Liz. We, we appreciate well, the thanks. call. Bye -bye. Right. Take care, Bye. Liz. Bye, guys. Bye. He's concerned about you, Matthew. What's that, sir? Thomas needs to have a, you know, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you're Ridge's son, you know, should have a lot. Like, I liked when Most Thomas, eligible ba bachelor in LA. you know, one time Thomas was caught with the intern. That was, well, we'll get into that later. Hey, welcome well, to Bold actually, Minds. Thomas What's did name? have a, where are you calling from? Hey, Casey, this is Joey. I'm calling from Illinois. How are y'all doing? Good. How you doing, man? Hey, Joey from Illinois. All right, hi right, Scott and Matt. It's good to t uh, talk to you. I've been watching the Bone Beautiful for a long time. It's been a while since I've called, but the episodes are getting exciting, and um, it's uh, always great to get a call and talk to you guys. And what has been over the last week or so? What's been the most um, your favorite uh, scene that you guys have shot in the, Scott, in the last week or so? Oh, geez. Uh, in, wait, it, was the question like? favorite scene that we've shot in the last week or so no ever uh, yeah ever. This last week. oh ever yeah ever. yeah ever oh ever ever uh i don't know i mean any anything that we shoot on location uh is is gonna be it's, you know up there just because it's it's different it's refreshing uh you know it's a new experience we get to work with like different parts of the crew that we don't always get to work with and sometimes it's actors we don't get to work with so um yeah, one of one of my favorites was was the wedding between Stephanie and Liam on on the top of Mount Ajax, uh, just because we were Casey was there. We were uh, we were it was like ten degrees outside or something. We were freezing our butts off. And uh, you ever you ever been in so much pain that it starts to be funny, uh, and you just like have uncontrollable laughter. That that's what it was like that day. And I just it, uh, sometimes experiences where you suffer in the moment become the most uh um fond in retrospect and so that that would be one of them for me yeah and i think i think for me it's uh well i don't have i don't have the luxury i don't think i, I came on the show they don't want to send me anywhere it's a it's it's like a prank <laughs> that hollywood has played on me because i love to travel and then i started acting and all i want to do is go film places and they only i only film here in la but we've done I mean, we've done a little bit of stuff like i've gone to brad's house and we shot on the the rooftop, that whole fight sequence with Scott. Um, oh yeah. Honestly, I think I mean the, all the scenes that that Scott and I have are a lot of fun. I think because I just get to give him a bunch of crap, and we like you know we'll just goof around until they say action, and then we hate each other for three minutes, and then you know go back to goofing off. But um, that's always fun. And th I mean, any time that uh, that we can get just a just a, a fun environment going and and just play around and i think that the most i've been able to do that on the show has been with scott so um there you go thanks nice. scott hey you're welcome matthew yeah i would say my favorite scene was uh thomas when thomas had his breakdown when he realized that he was he was attracted to the mannequin and he had the breakdown the, that was really never like, never once did thomas have a breakdown and then think he was attracted to the mannequin no but you 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 realized you were going crazy yeah that's not that's not him figuring out he's in love with a mannequin it's him realizing he's lost his the, mind the thing he's in love with well, okay he, he's in love okay. with realizing oh, that the object he thought that the mannequin was talking to him it was like a, right. almost a demon that's hope more, telling more him that. to go get hope. You were because you, you had the the hematobin, and you, you know, it was <laughs> it wasn't. A, you gotta get you gotta get the ridiculous uh, scientific reasons for for Thomas's you know craziness right because it wasn't a hematobin. What? <laughs> It was a hemoglobin. A hemoglobin. It's a hemoglobin. That's what it was. Right? Oh, I don't know. You know, <laughs> they 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 change it all the time. And for you, Scott, I liked when you um uh how do I put this? You the the yeah you you got trapped in the bathroom on the plane to to Australia and you hit your oh head. yeah yeah the, the the thing that was really fun yeah. 
That was one of the few times that they let me do uh, my own stunts. I mean, we, we get to do, you know, st- like fight stunts and fake punches and stuff like that. But that really involved like head. There was a whole it was a sequence. It was an entire sequence where I had to slip on this and then hit my head on the sink and then fall back and hit my head on the door. And and it all took place in this tiny like three by three set. Literally, it was like that small of a set. Um, and, and yeah, they, and and I, I they had a there was a stunt guy, uh, but but I got to do all of it and then they got like extra coverage with with um our, our stunt guy um but uh yeah that was fun that was That's, a good one well joe thank you for calling in thank you thanks, you guys joe. have a good thanks, thanks, joe. thanks. have Bye. a good one so it's a hemoglobin i think we're all joking not a hemoglobin. remember that that uh, kindergarten cop is like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's not a tumor. He's not a tumor. He's a tumor. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody to the chopper. Hey, hey. I know that voice. Hey, Casey, it's Bubbles. Yes, hey, you do know the voice. It's Bubbles. Say hi hey, to Bubbles. Matthew and Scott. Hey, hey. Matt and Scott. I have questions <laughs> for you guys today. Um, so. Usually when I call in, I usually just get right to the point with my questions, and then I'll let you guys answer. So we're going to stick to that formula today. Um, my first like question it. is for Scott. Well, actually, I'm going to wait and ask yes. Scott second because I have two questions for Scott. So my first mm. question is actually for Matt. Um, you've already answered the question about Thomas and whether or not he will have a love interest. So we won't go over that again. But over the years, we have seen Thomas basically doing anything that Hope asks him to do from climbing on the top of Liam's cliff house, and that was Adam Gregory's um, Thomas, um, to draw that big old heart with the sword through it. The one time that Thomas, I mean, that Liam had broke her heart about something, and um, Thomas climbed to the top of the cliff house to draw a sword with a heart in it for her. Um, up until recently where Thomas kind of signed away some of his parental rights to um, for his son to hope. So with the way that we're seeing Thomas getting reintegrated with his family, we know that he's healing and he's making strides. He's in a healthy place now. Do you think this is the end of Thomas being, quote, unquote, obsessed with hope? Is this the end of Thomas? um being um team hope is he is he going to let that go now and focus more on his son and his well-being or do you think that getting douglas back in his life is going to somehow turn back on his desire to have hope as more than just douglas's mother right um i mean i i can only hope that 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 sort of it's not that i want the it, I want the, obs- the like if if I had my way, then I would have the obsession to hope be done with, and uh, because I don't even think that I don't think that there was really that was a a, a big deal in Thomas in Thomas's life uh, before like I came onto the show. It seemed like that that he had other relationships that were much more significant to him, um, but obviously you know him losing caroline and then having you know to deal with with being a single parent and and looking for a mother for his child kind of drew that along with a bunch of other things seemed to drive him down a um down a well but i I would say that um i can only hope that that he's done with with that kind of behavior it seems as though i mean they've spent you know a year and a half to two years um uh, really making sure that that thomas is is uh is finding finding himself and finding a better way of living and not being manipulative and not you know uh doing things to hurt people but at the same time i think that you're always going to have this aspect of thomas which is sort of um you know he, he's a guy who, who with the flip of a switch could could um could really let his emotions take hold and uh and do some some grim things. I don't think they'll be obsessive any longer. I think that, but you, but you still have like, I mean, you can't stick Thomas in a room with, with Sheila, you know, and, and after Sheila does something terrible and then have Thomas not maybe, uh, uh, lose it, you know? So, so I think that, that there's definitely a fire within him that could come out, but, um, I can only hope that like the obsessive stuff is, is, is sort of done. Cause it seems as though, 
that um, he sort of worked through all of that stuff. There's still the childhood mm-hmm. psychology stuff that I mean stuff from his, from his parents and everything from his youth that that lead him to to being a fiery person um, that that has a lot of issues. But I don't think that uh, the obsessive nature is going to continue. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I have one more little quick question for you before I move on to Scott. This is a yes or no question. You cannot offer any embellishment, just yes or no, and then we're moving to Scott. Did Thomas kill Emma? No. 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 Thank you. Okay, so Scott, I have two questions for you. Um, one is about the show, and the other one is kind of more of a personal thing um, based on your other theoretical bullshit account. So the first question that is for Liam, and you can answer this as Scott or Liam, whichever is your pleasure. Um, But some fans want to know, why does Liam always seem so dismissive of Kelly's origin? During the whole mannequin storyline with Thomas, he, um, there was one point where he spoke about her, like she was a mistake. And this was after, um, Liam had slept with Steffi and then Steffi finds out she's pregnant and they got to have the paternity test. And Liam says something like, oh, my gosh, how could I get Steffi pregnant twice? Well, Kelly was a mistake because you guys were married at that time. So a lot of fans take umbrage um, at that, that you seem regretful about your baby. How do you see Liam and Kelly's relationship? Yeah, you know, you're not the first person to say that. And I remember being really surprised that the other time that I've I've heard that. Uh and I don't I don't know the scene that, that you're you're talking about. Um if I had to guess, because I can tell you this, our writers do not want Liam to come across that way. So uh, my best hypothesis is that I, the actor, may have ad libbed something or 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 maybe misspoke a line. Uh, that gave that impression. Uh, I, I've cert- I, I can also tell you, I, I'm certainly not playing that Liam uh, right. has any, uh, um, you know, antipathy toward Kelly or that he regrets uh, her. I mean, I, I try to play that Liam like loves the shit out of Kelly. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it, it seems like there must have been some line of dialogue that aired at some point on the show uh, that that. Um, gave the other impression and uh all i can tell you i mean i i totally believe that um we do so many episodes so you know so many days of the year that it's entirely possible that uh that was like a a mistake by me the actor that's that's all i can think of okay um and so the second question is um in line with your theoretical bullshit account um i've seen some of the discussions that you and matt have had um, but I've yeah. also listened to your discussions with Matt Dylan Hunty, and um, so I would like to know if you have any plans to attend any conventions or conferences for non-believers, because we would love to have you at NanoCon in Nashville. Um, and oh. then um, I guess I would like to know, um, or re- really my motivation for wanting to have you come to NanoCon is so that there can be some sort of discussion about um, atheists and non-believers in entertainment and how you deal with some of the things that you get into your scripts and some of the um, things that you have to say. And, and, you know, how do you, how do you work with that? How does it, I don't know what I'm trying to ask you, but you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I can, I can, I can sort of BS my way through this. Yeah, sure. So, so, um, when it when it comes to actor, let me work backwards. When it comes to actors in Hollywood, let's be honest. Um, I, I'm probably in the major in the majority, right? I mean, we we work in California, Los Angeles. This is a very sort of secular, liberal part of the country, and I think um, I, I think probably more than fifty percent of my colleagues, the people I work with, uh, are not super religious. I mean, maybe, maybe they have some identity, you know, some like religious identity, but for the most part, I'm really not the fish out of water here. And so a question I get a lot is, you know, do do you, do you get like fired from jobs for being an atheist or, you know, are you, are you like persecuted for being an atheist? Yeah. If I were running for president, you know, that would be a very different story. Um, atheism is unpopular, you know, on, on a, on a sort of, uh, 
um, domestic level across the country and across the world. Yes, that's true. But uh, in the entertainment industry, um, I think uh, uh, I, I don't I don't I don't think I'm that unusual. I'm unusual in in the sense that I'm very, very interested in the philosophy of religion and theology and that I take it seriously and that I want to have productive conversations about it. Um, which which leads me to your second question or the, the other part of your question about atheist conferences. There is actually a, a conference that I'm looking forward to, but it's not uh, an atheistic or secular or anti-religious conference. It's uh, a, a very good friend of mine who's a Christian and runs a Christian channel and, and he's going to be doing a conference. And the kinds of talks and conversations that happen at that conference are just wonderful. I mean, there, there are lots of atheists that go to that conference, but we have really respectful, productive, philosophical conversations on a stage for an audience that takes this stuff as seriously as I do. One of the, I, I used to do a lot of these sort of atheist conferences and I would go and I've been like a keynote speaker at a couple of them. And the truth is, I started to get a little disenchanted with the culture of just kind of shitting on religion. Um, I, I, I obviously I have a lot of criticisms of of religion, but but I think those criticisms should be respectful, and I think that we should acknowledge that you can be a theist or a Christian or a Muslim and still be a rational, self consistent person. And uh, I just what 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 matters to me is is converging and making progress and uh having a dialogue that that actually has a chance of making somebody think more deeply instead of just making enemies uh and that's that's one of the liabilities of some of those conferences right you, you get with a group of people that all share your exact same views and then you're just you're just all sitting around agreeing with each other right and then and then there's a tendency to unconsciously sort of vilify the people that you don't agree with and and uh, at the older I get, the more mature I get. Um, I think uh, that that worries me, and I and I don't want to be a part of that world as much. It, I hope that um, helps answer your question. No, you did, and I well, appreciate that answer. And I've actually learned a lot from sitting in your discords and catching and, you when you're just on the go and you've got a couple of minutes. So I really appreciate th that input. Thank you. All um, right, and, and Bubbles. I want to thank you so much. I just need to get to more phone line questions. Sorry. That's my fault. That's but my yes, fault. thank you guys but, but so much. You. But Bubbles, always a pleasure. Thank you for calling. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Bye. Um, Thanks, I, Bubbles. Bubbles brings up something that I wanted to kind of talk about here is that you, and we're, without getting into it on the show, you and Matthew have very um, opposite views on uh, religion and politics, which we're not going to get in because this is bold live, not current events live, not religious live. But <laughs> you two have be found common ground together and have become really good friends and are able to see, celebrate the differences and the different beliefs in one another. And I'm just kind of curious, how did that all, where was that? How did you find a connection there? How did we find how, a how connection there? Yeah, I, I, was don't, I, I think, I think we got done shooting one day and it was you, me and Annika. This is the, the first memory I, I have, I think, which is we were sitting outside on the, on the uh, uh, little patio and we were having a beer. And I think that you started, I mean, I, I think I knew that you had, you had said you were an atheist before. Um, and I, and I sort of wanted to have, a, I love having those kind of conversations. I think we just found a really good flow of like, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm a theist and a Christian and a believer and, and you're an atheist, but we found, you know, I think we find sort of a lot of these, uh, philosophical and theological ideas very interesting. And, and we're both, uh, heavy seekers of truth and i think we recognize that and and so that just sort of you know snowballed over time that when we go camping or whatever like we would just get into these fun conversations and we can disagree but but we can respect each other and our beliefs you know yeah i think so i think i think it's just that we both found that we really really enjoy the quality of conversation um and yeah. wanted to continue having them and sometimes we've gone in circles we've had the same conversation a couple of different times and yet we still find new stuff to to think about so it's, it's well, nice. sure because i want you to know jesus well <laughs> well well i applaud you guys for you know like listening to each other and and learning from each other and having that friendship because i feel like a lot of that on social media all we see is one-sided arguments and nobody wants to hear the other person or you're right, you're wrong. And it's like, let's just have the dialogue and let's respect each other's viewpoint. Yeah. 
you know? And I, and I will say one of the, one of the great things, I mean, from our conversation, Scott, that I've had is, I mean, I, I've, I now, there's a few uh, uh, points, we won't go into them, but there, there are a few um, heavily debated topics that I think that I see, and, and I don't think they're represented very often from the atheistic point of view, but I think that you reconcile your worldview with a lot, with, with, with how you answer um, a lot of these debates. And I, and I think it's, it's sort of beautiful that you're, that you, that you go from the ground up and you actually really, really think through these things. And I don't disagree. I mean, I do disagree with your worldview and I, and I, and I don't think that it's a- accurate necessarily because I have a, a precondition that's different, but, but, I do think that it's beautiful how how much you think through these things, and I would say that you are you are like I think Bubbles was saying, not to burst your bubble, um, that you that you are a, a prime example of of a a very well intended thinking atheist that is to be contended with. Thanks, man. I that I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me, and I guess I should say. I, I, I think there, there's a, a sort of value that I think we may be circling around here, which it, well, it's a it's a value of mine, and I've shared this with you before. But I I, I try not to have, um, I try not to have any attachment to any given belief that I have. Like I am not my beliefs, right? And so if there's a part of my worldview that isn't working, or or e- either isn't consistent with some other part of my worldview, or isn't consistent with the empirical you know data around us. Um, then you just have to get rid of that part of your worldview, right? You, you want the most self-consistent, defensible, robust worldview that you can. And I think we should all aspire to do that. And, and one of the more uncomfortable things that that requires is not feeling attached to, to any one of our beliefs. We just want the best beliefs, right? We, we don't Absolutely, want, yeah. you know, and I think we, we, um, that is something that we share and it's part of why we have uh, such a nice conversation. Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys are true gentlemen, and are did I hear that you guys may be doing a podcast together? <laughs> Ask Matthew. This it's it's, it's something that we've, we at, at first it started out as like a little jokey thing. Oh, like we should do that. It's like how people go, like we should start a band. Um, but then I think I think the idea started to become a little more and more salient. And I, I just said to Matthew, listen, I love talking about this stuff, as you know. But I can't the 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 entire technical side of it. I mean, producing it, creating it, like the the equipment, like that part of my brain is damaged, right? I could so um, make it happen. If you can make it happen, then uh, then 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 I'm on. I'm Do you on have board. a name uh, that you would call so, your podcast? We don't have a name nope. yet, uh, but but I will say, I mean, I it's not yeah, it's not one of those things that that you just throw out and say, you know, well, we should create a band, and when we're like, you know, after a few <laughs> drinks or something, and then like never right. becomes a thing. Like I I am I well I, I you know even one of our I guess mutual friends, but one of one of Scott's friends that that uh, runs a Christian channel on YouTube, um, I've reached out to to talk to you about technical stuff, and and I really would love to do it. It's sort of just I'm, I'm ironing out the details, but it's it's also you know. I mean, I'm shooting 10 episodes next week. I think Scott's pretty close to that. So uh, whenever there's time, I will be sitting down to try and actually figure out the whole production side of it because Scott has lovingly just dumped all of that in my lap. So, <laughs> but I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm, I'm I, such I wanna, a dick. I love I learning that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, we have uh, possible names for it. Two Dudes with Value Points. Uh, that's from Candice. And maybe Soap Studs. Uh, that was from somebody else. So there you We've got. If you got a title for a we, Matthew Scott podcast, go ahead and type. We it thought there. about a play on words that would somehow tie in soap operas to religion, but we, we, yeah. we couldn't think of anything. Yeah, that's. I don't think that most people make a very direct connection regularly between those two things. No, no, that's why it's. That's why it would be funny. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. I'm, I, yeah. The hour's moving quickly. I'm going back to the phone lines. Maybe we'll get through some of these quick. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Casey. What's up? Hey, it's Rebecca from San Clemente. Say hi to Matthew and Scott. That's me. How's it going, hi, Matthew? Hey, Rebecca. Hi, Scott. All right. How are you doing? Nice to talk to you again. Nice to um, talk to you. What's up? I, um, let's see. My first question is um, for Scott. Um, 
actually for both of you, do you think, are you going to be having any upcoming teams together because of the um, Douglas situation? I think it's okay to answer that. I, well, I can't tell you, like, I, I can't speak to what the context is. So the Douglas thing, no, I'm not yeah, going to do that. But, but you, but you get, but, but I mean, it's, it's not my fault, I swear. Uh, but, but you can expect um, some interaction between the two characters coming up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bad I'm thing sorry. to say that we just had a couple scenes together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. What's it, um, yeah. what's it like adjusting to the new Douglas? They got rid of that cute little Henry kid. Uh, well, I love. I Meta, love you take Henry. it. He's your son. Yeah, I mean, I love Henry and uh, and Django. I mean, Django is he's, he's 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 great. I mean, they're they're both great kids. I think that the mm -hmm. you know, I mean, uh, Henry became like my own, you know, son. It's like my my corner, sort of my second son. So yeah. it's, it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's not like I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like coming on to a, into a new production where I have a new son, and 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 that's there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I think that happens a lot on soaps when you. When you change well, up a character, because yeah. someone's bringing in their own their own that, uh, version of it, but I think they're both great, and I love them both. And that they're, that they're brings awesome. me up, uh, Rebecca, if you don't mind, I had a, I have a question for you, okay. um, Thomas. Do you know how many times Thomas has been sore asked? <laughs> so You know, sore asked. Thomas has been sore asked on the show. How many times? <laughs> I'm asking you, Matthew. Are you asking me? What the heck does that even mean? What does sore ass mean? <laughs> yeah. Soap opera rapid mean? aging syndrome. Oh. It's, it's an oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, uh, I don't know. Matthew's like, I believe in the Bible. You can't talk to me about sore asses. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a bunch of squats. Um, no, I think I, I I I'm sure there's been a couple of times where Thomas has has been has that, that's rapidly two times, aged in two a short times, period of time. Two times. Two. Okay. Once two times. from like he was a baby. I said a couple. He was like to five or six, and then again to a teenager. So, <laughs> that, um, and uh, Scott, since Rebecca brought up the recast of Douglas, um, you've been on the show <laughs> quite a long time. You've seen a lot of recasts, and you always get this question like. You know, what's it like working with this person or that person? But of the time you've been here, we've had four different Thomases. Uh, who's been your favorite yeah. Thomas? Gee whiz, boy, this is, ooh. Yeah, we drew Tyler oh, Bell. A real, it's a real tough one. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, gosh. I'm just, uh, I think I think I got to go with um, the most handsome one, which is obvious to all of us, right? Yeah, you don't even have to say it. It's Matthew. Know. I'm screwing with you. It's of course it's Matthew. Matthew's the well, only the Matthew. only Thomas that I've I've really gotten to hang out outside of. I've li I've literally My mother gone on even like several him. camping trips with this <laughs> Thomas. Okay, that's the correct answer. All right, Rebecca, thank you for calling. You're Thanks, welcome. Rebecca. See you cuties it. later. Thanks, Take it Rebecca. easy. Bye bye. All right. <laughs> She's never missed an episode. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, Thanks, Rebecca. One more, she gets the reason a, we um, have jobs. Uh, uh, a mug. Hi, <clears throat> welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? All of that, my last. Hello, my name is Julie, and I'm calling from Wisconsin. Hey, Julie from Wisconsin. Hey, Julie, you may yes. want to uh, turn the volume down on on the whatever the device is that you're listening to us okay. on. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. For a Matthew Scott podcast, we thought about a play. We can still hear Casey talking. Yeah. Our, uh, yeah. I'm not talking. Okay, whatever. Who am I talking to? I don't think that most people may. You're Julie? talking to Matthew, Casey, and Scott. And that's Julie, okay. right? Julie from Wisconsin, yes. Oh, there we go. It worked. There we go. That, Do you have a question perfect. for our awesome. guest tonight? Yes, um, Scott and Matthew. Um, first of all, one for Scott. And um, Jackie was asked this question a while back on one of her bold lives. But now, who do you, who's a better kisser, Jackie or Annika? Okay, can I dispel this myth? Um, we're not, <laughs> it's, it's not real kissing. It's not, I, I don't, uh, I don't know how to, um, 
it's it's not real it's not real kissing yes our lips are touching but we're not i'm not doing what i would do with my wife right like there's not mm. there's obviously I'm, well i i guess I, maybe i only work this way i never use tongue right like that's a, a thing for me i just don't i don't do that um and it's not even it you know it's not even like out of respect for my wife or but it's just the way that i was trained on over on general hospital that like it's a, it's a soap opera it's a family medium yeah. you know people yeah. don't want to see your tongue you know like so um really there's a there's a kind there's a very technical it's you know kind of way to do it i'm not um uh, there's we're not turned on we're not it's just it's so mm -hmm. clinical uh that asking who's a better kisser uh it's it's like asking what's north of the north pole it's a question that doesn't make sense to me um so i don't i don't have a good answer for you i'm, I'm sorry okay and then sorry, Matthew, i saw on social media that you have um a new love in your life yes i do uh, hello oh, yes. Matthew, yeah I that's that's that was for me i was like uh yeah <laughs> any do oh, you have any questions great. <laughs> No, yeah, no um, she's I do. very beautiful. Where did you meet her? She, she is. Um, I met her originally oh, years it's a ago. Cute story. Uh, we were both. You, know, it is a cute story. We're both. Uh, we both worked out at the same gym, actually, and um, oh. but we it, nothing ever happened then. And I actually, we barely talked at at that point in time. But it wasn't until years later. Um, uh i think probably two years two years ago, a year and a half two years ago something like that that um that we sort of reconvened and started hanging out again and then it, it just sort of naturally progressed but she's you know she's amazing oh well i'm so happy for you well, well thank julie you. thank you for calling in okay thanks julie bye now bye, -bye. all bye -bye. right julie we're gonna get to a few more phone line callers here did I do it? Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Gina from Frankfurt. Gina, hi. How are you? Hey, Gina from Frankfurt. How are you? Hey, Frankfurt. Um, I got to answer your question about um, the best Thomas. I think uh, he is the best Thomas. Yeah. I did like one before, but he is really good. Um, my question uh, to both of you, well, first off, I want to say you both are good parents, and I think that Thomas should have his son, Douglas, live with him because, you know, he's he's a good guy, and uh, he's got himself back on track. But my question is about Sheila. Do you think that maybe down the road one of you guys might trust her or maybe Thomas might say, well, you know, I really want Douglas back, so can you help me? I mean, do you think that could be possible at some point? I, I think it's a really interesting idea to say stick Thomas and Sheila together for some reason, like them to be on the same side or them to be on the opposite side. Because either way, like you, you, you have this aspect of Thomas that he, he could he could really, you know, lose it. Obviously, he's he's done some pretty terrible things in the Thomas past. And Sheila? But now he's kind of trying Sheila. to be a much better person. Yeah. I think either way, you, you could have a really fun dynamic Dad. if you stuck those two together. But currently, Sheila's and dead, I'll... so I don't... I just... Yeah, I mean, it would be great. Oh, I mean, I love yeah. Kimberlyn, and so, mm -hmm. like, you know, but but if they were, you know, it's a soap opera, so who knows? Yeah, and I, I think um, you guys play a, a good part, um, but who's your favorite character on the show that you really like um, acting with, both of you? Wait, we we both like acting with Casey. I don't. You have to point so different ways. No, that's, that's, I, that's, no that's, they, they, it comes out differently. So they like. You know what? <laughs> oh. Here's an interesting. Here, you know what, um, Gina? This was my question. Can you imagine a world? This one might make your mind hurt a little bit. But can you imagine if Matthew actually played Liam and Scott played Thomas? Like, can you imagine? How did that? you know that'd, I would that'd, that'd be fun. Yeah, I'm, I was that before I answered the phone and then I thought well no maybe that'd be stupid to say but yeah I was wondering what it would be like what would it be you like you guys are both good looking yeah yeah what if we did oh a story God. like where we swapped bodies yeah we should do like a, a special awesome. episode every year 
to be like a dorm, oh, just yeah. everybody on the cast play a different character for like one episode, and then we'll go back to the Hope normal, is yeah. like a special, Steffi. like non canonical oh. episode. Yeah, yeah. That'd and be who fun. Gonna, Obviously, who's gonna play I would play Kila. Quinn. Huh? Who's gonna play Kila? You think Brooke? Who's gonna? I don't know. Should play mm, who should play I mean, No, I'm, I'm going to say Don Diamond. I was going to say Torsten. <laughs> hmm. And um, also, one last thing. Um, the thing I liked about uh, Liam, um, that he when he was with Douglas, um, talking about, you know, the Santa Claus thing. I think uh, you guys had right. a good bond there with playing the Santa yeah. Claus part. I just had yeah, to get that in there. Because I think good, um, you both are good with kids. Thanks. But thank yeah. you. Yeah, we, we, we have a lot of fun doing it. All right, Gina, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Gina. You're welcome. Thanks, Gina. Oh, is it okay if I say God bless? Is it okay if I say God bless? God Both bless. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, because God I bless. didn't know that Liam was an atheist. So, you know, I was like, well, do I say God bless? Because I say that after every time I talk oh, to God, somebody. No, so. Of I, I even I even tell people God bless. I, it, and it's, even okay, if somebody says you know great. I'll pray for you. I'm like okay, thanks. You know it's 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 a nice thing. Oh to great, say. God, that's yeah. wonderful. I mean, Scott knows guys, that God exists. You, he just denies him. That's a whole thing. <laughs> oh stop it. No great. stop it. Gina, well, thank you so have much. To go on and watch, um, okay. Yep, I'm gonna have to go on and watch the Bold and the Beautiful now because I missed it today. I was working. <laughs> oh, it's really <laughs> good. All right. Oh yeah. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Bye. All right. All right. That was Gina. Let's see, guys. Got nothing else going on Friday night, right? You're okay. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi, Scott. Hi, Matthew. How are you? I just need we're, a little more well. volume. I can barely hear you. Um. Volume. No. Um, just no. You just talk louder. Just talk louder. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so no, my okay, question no is for Scott and Matthew. You came to the right place. <laughs> yeah. So my opinion, I mean, my question is, what are your opinions over Thomas's custody over Douglas? What, like, what are what are our opinions as like, like as, as if we were. Uh, I don't think there's any viewers of the show, or what are our, or yeah. what are our characters' opinions? Their personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, this this seems like it's gonna. No matter what we say, we're gonna get in trouble. Yeah. Uh, I think. I. I mean. I guess it's true. I think I think the show is doing a really nice job of of uh, painting the the picture of how messy and complex and difficult um, child custody issues are, and people in mixed families. You know, people have different types of dads and uh, multiple different you know paternal roles and and maternal roles and. Um, it's, you know, it can get messy, it can get sticky. And I think when, when you have um, a bunch of people in a family who are all, you know, the one thing that we can say about the storyline is, you know, you can bar, let's, let's just like sidebar whatever, you know, sus suspicions about Thomas Liam may have in the future or has had in the past. It, it, really, all of these characters do love Douglas, right? Like that's the one thing that you can't deny is that every single player on the map loves Douglas. Now that's not true always in real life when it comes to children. Sometimes people treat children as poker chips, right? As, as, as power, you know, they, they, they do power moves, you know, because, and, um, and I think modeling uh, characters who, who genuinely care, even if they don't agree with each other, even if they fight over it, uh, I think that's, I think that's a nice story worth telling. So that, that I'll say that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think it's it's pretty. Um, it, I mean, like, there's the, the worst. I think the hardest thing I've ever had to do was the, the scenes where Thomas is sort of losing his mind, and he and he really has to scold uh, Douglas. And, and unfortunately, at the time, I was working with Henry, and Henry, like, all we did was goof around in between takes, and he was just the sweetest kid. He totally got. It. I was like, hey, man, you, you know, I gotta like 
yell at you a little bit here. And he's like, he's like, yeah, yell louder. I don't care. I know you're faking it. Like he, he was completely fine. And that's that, that, oh, that freed me a little bit from, from that, uh, that felt like kind of a bondage because I, 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 I genuinely, it's like every bone in me it, it hated that, that, that activity. And, and, um, and I think that that is, I think what Scott just said there is kind of beautiful that, um, that everyone on the show really does like all the characters really love Douglas and they want the best for him now, at least now, you know, I mean, Thomas still loved him at the time, but it was, um, you know, he, he did some things that, that any person should regret, um, you know, kind of scolding him. But, but I think that other than that, I mean, we, I think that everyone has, has been an example for, um, for, you know, even if you have your own quarrels and your own problems that, that, the children don't deserve any any of the um, of the backlash, and I think that, that there's been so I can't. And this is one of those times where I think something repetitive is actually really good because there's been so many times that multiple characters have said we really just want what's best for Douglas, or we really just want what's best for the kids. And I think that it's it's a beautiful thing to reiterate, and it's something that every person should think of in their own situation is to always put the kids first and make sure that they don't feel any of the pain that comes along with the quarrels from adults. Well, there you go. How'd we do? That was awesome. Um, thank you for answering that question. <laughs> All right. Thank you for calling. In. Thanks for calling in. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. I'm going to take one more phone call here. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling hi, from? Uh, Melissa from Holtzville, New York. How are you doing? Hey, Melissa. Say hey, hi, Melissa. Melissa. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, hi. I just got a couple of questions. Um, uh, Liam, do you think uh, Thomas is better to take care of Douglas now, or how do you feel about that? Well, you, you addressed me as Liam. Do you do you want to know what I think Liam Sorry, would Scott. say to that question? <laughs> yeah. Oh no 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 that no yes. that's totally fine. I I just I, I totally respond to Liam to that. people. You know I don't expect people to even know my real name if they see me in the supermarket. Why would they? Um, I, I'm happy to answer that question either way. But are you asking about Liam's opinion or my personal opinion? Uh, Liam's opinion. Yeah, I think. Um, well, I, well, Liam, uh, as far as what I'm playing uh, so far, but sometimes, sometimes you get a new script and then you're like, oh, I had that opinion all along. I had no idea, you know, uh, but but what I've been playing is that the, the one thing Liam doesn't question is that is that Thomas loves Douglas. Right. Um, I think Liam is, you know, Liam can. Well, actually, I haven't I haven't tuned into the show, so I'm not sure where we are right now or what I can say and, and what I can't say. But uh, I think Liam just has a little bit of post-traumatic stress disorder from from his interactions with Thomas via Douglas in the past. And uh, of course, he's always going to be wary. And that's just the nature of their relationship as of now. Thomas and, and Liam's relationship could always change. Look at look at how, you know, Wyatt and Liam used to be and look at the way that they are now. You know, so so there's always yeah. um, there's always room in the future for them to uh, rec not only reconcile, but grow to love each other. Uh, but uh, we're, we're not there yet. And uh, I think Liam is just um, being cautious just because just because of the history. That, that's a yeah. vague answer. Sorry, but. That's okay. Uh, Matthew, how do you feel about it? Do you feel Thomas is ready to be a, a father to Douglas now? Uh, yeah, personally, from, from what I've seen, I mean, like I said, I think it's been uh, like about a year and a half at least of, of Thomas really, really making an effort to, to double and trickle, triple check his own state of being. It seems, you know, he's, he's, he definitely is focused on at least uh, as far as I could see up until now. Uh, focused on telling the truth and putting everyone else's needs above his own. Um, and so I'd say, given that, um, that absolutely he, you know, I think, I, I think that he could set a great example for Douglas, hopefully, and that um, he definitely deserves more time with his son. Yeah, I think he is a forester after all. He should be with the forester family. 
All so, right, Melissa. Katie, well, good. Where is Katie? Good. Where's Katie? <laughs> Katie has yeah, been. Katie has I, been. Um, Katie is around. I think Katie. You'll see see Katie coming up very soon. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Thank you. All Have right, Melissa. Night, thank, thank you for you. calling. All right. Well, with that, okay. I'm going to close close the phone line. Can I can I say one thing real quick, please? Casey? I just felt like. So I saw something in the chat. I haven't really been paying too much attention, but someone named Mina said, and I want to just uh, say hi to Mina. Um, she said, can you acknowledge my existence? And I just want to say for everyone who is in the chat or, or anyone who possibly is listening or could be listening, that you are seen and your existence is is acknowledged. Um, whether or not Scott or I see it right now, um, and that you know you you are loved. I just want to make sure that you know that. Well, you, cool you guys are going to have go that. the opportunity to recognize everyone because now it's time for our fan roll call. And I know you've been on the show before, oh, so yeah. this this is the time <laughs> yeah, where we're about you, to do exactly that. Yeah. You, the fans yeah, okay, that are watching the show, please go ahead and type <laughs> your names in the comment part. And uh, Matthew and Scott are going to say hi to you for the next, you know, five to 10 minutes. So, or 60 seconds, wow. whichever comes. So okay. let's go, Kim. Hey, Kimberly. Here we go. Uh, wait, do we just go? Uh, we, we just go? go? We, yeah. yeah okay. We just go. Gary, we got Kimberly, we got, we got Mandy, Mandy, we, we got, got, we, got uh, yeah, we got Annie, Renee, Greg, yeah, Kim, we've, Mandy, we've Kevin. We've got so many people. Esther. Names, like 15 uh, times yeah, in just, uh, Melissa. Uh, Stefan. Shanice. We've got Kyle. Uh, we've got Ashley. Amanda, we've got Kyle, Betty. Joan, Cheryl. Uh, Pebbles, Lucy. Pebbles Jennifer. Alice. Stefan. Yvonne, uh, Yvonne, Jennifer, Mandy, Grace, Nissa. Hey, what's going on? Yo, it's Bubbles, it's so Dominic, fast. Jerry, uh, uh, Bruno, Bubbles, Jennifer, Bruno, Gina, Elaine, Ken, Anita, Ken, Dominique, Ruth, Grace, Kathy, Kathy Marie, Aaron, Kyle, Kyle, Emma, Jennifer, uh, Bruno, Jerry, Mo Monique, uh, Roger, Alice, Mona, Jennifer, uh, keep it Roger, going. Can -can? Jackie, Aaron, Can -can? Grace, Antonio, yeah. Bubbles again. He's getting uh, a lot of Pebbles, them. Elaine, Jennifer, Antonio, Aaron. Terry, oh, we're Emily, just saying Lisa, the same five names, Julie, uh, <laughs> Julie, uh, Emily, Tori, Dominique. Hi, Donna, Norma, that's it. We did it. Hey, we okay. did it. There you Iris. go. All right, everyone. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you, everyone. Wait, Scott, I have a question. Yeah. Are you watching Big Brother? Yeah. Do you watch Big Brother I, no, anymore? I, 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 I fell off of it. I used yeah, to no, it happens. It and I haven't. Do you? Do you, what, Did you watch it, Better Call it, Saul? Yes. Did you? Did you? I, saw, I, yeah. You finished I'm, it. I'm caught up. I finished it. Yeah. 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 Maybe someday we'll talk about that. Like to. I would love to. I do, I, I love that show. I, I I knew you were a huge Breaking Bad fan, and I just. I almost, I almost love Better Call Saul better than um, yeah. Breaking I mean, Bad. in a lot of in a lot of ways. It was it, just it, it, it was a, it was so good. Um, Matthew, what are you watching? What am I? Well, you know what's great? There's a uh, well, there's a oh gosh, there's so there. Well, we're right now we're going back through The Office, which you know is yep. a classic. I did. That. Um, I actually, you know what? I'm not trying to bring up religion here, uh, but. But there's actually a really interesting and a really well done series called The Chosen about Jesus. Um, that I, it's like you never see good stuff about from, from you know all of it's usually very low quality and horribly written. Um, but I think this this show is actually well done. So that there's there's that we watched that that was like a I don't know I think that was like two years ago. They have another season, but um, oh, it's like a scripted yeah, was, drama. It's not a documentary, but like it's scripted. No, it's, no, it's like a script. It, well, it's like a scripted drama. It is it's kind of a documentary, but a scripted drama. So they they try and make huh. it as 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 biblical as possible. But they expand on on other scenes and things that could have happened huh. leading up to this, that, and the other. And I think That's they do cool. a beautiful job with uh, with being being uh, true to scripture at least as much as you can. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I should check that out. Uh, I want to I want to address what Mona from Montreal said. The bear. This is the show. I mean, Casey asked me about better is call it? Saul specifically, yeah. but but the, oh, yeah. the bear on Hulu. Yeah. Is is one of the best series I think I've seen in years. It is wow. incredible. I'm ex I'm excited um, to watch it. I haven't started it yet, but that's that's cool. on my list. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fantastic. Well, next time you guys come back, we'll just talk about movies and TV. Love it. I could do that all day. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Just Let's but the it. one show we're not allowed to talk about in that episode is the Bold and the Beautiful. Off, no Bold and Beautiful. No, like we're. 
No. Like we're, only like we're every not even a show. That's great. I like I like that idea. <laughs> All right. Well, love you guys. Thank you so much for uh, being here today. This was a lot of fun, and I'm glad I you know I've had you on separately, and it was fun to have you on together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to everyone for spending an hour with us just droning on about ourselves. So, uh, yeah. Sorry about the first 15 minutes where Scott was figuring out his technical problems. Yes. And also, I'm I'm deeply sorry for wasting everyone. And I'm really bummed. I had this whole thing. I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you camping questions like trivia. We could answer. Why why didn't you ask us? What? what, Well, okay. Here's a trivia question. What's uh, this is the answer. What? Uh, but what, what what are you doing if you Why take you a give us the answer? What well what are you doing if you you take a spade, do it, and cover it back up with soil? What is what is that? Pooping? What you, camping. See this are is, you pooping? Yes, that's that's what you that, yeah. that's that's camping trivia. What is pooping? Well, yeah, this, what should, this you, show has what gone should you do if you need a poo in the wilderness? Bold Live has jumped the shark. That's that's. We what could have talked now. about many wonderful things that came to camping. That was the worst. What is cowboy camping? <laughs> I don't Why think do I they... want to know what I got this off the internet. I don't internet. know what cowboy camping I'm an Eagle yeah, Scout. Yeah, because everything on the internet is legit. <laughs> That's sleeping on the ground without a shelter, camping? no tent, no tarp, no hammock, and no bug net. Cowboy camping. I've done that before, and I'm not a cowboy. So that's when what you piss mean? off your wife and you're sleeping outside in the yard. That's what type that's... of tree bark is best okay. for lighting a campfire? Oh. Ooh. Is it, is it uh, birch? Birch, the lighting. Yes. Must, good said, job. Uh, yes. Birch. That's good. Birch? Yeah. Nice. Cool. Um, that's a good question. I, I didn't really yeah, prep a, it a lot. I just I just Googled <laughs> camping trivia and um, yeah, I don't know. But where's where, <laughs> where? Okay, let's just end you with this. Where's your favorite place to go camping? That's it. You're done. Oh man. Uh, you know, it's 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 just too it's too popular now. But twenty years or ten years ago, there was a there was a little place in in the uh, high Sierras called Peppermint Creek, which I used to love. It was a little, mm-hmm. um, just a little gem. And then and then Yelp came along, and people started uh, telling each other how to get there. And now you can't, you just can't even get a spot there. It's just always popular. So. And uh, now you so just what, what the, I was... uh, the bold and beautiful world about peppermint. Peppermint, what is it? Well, no, it's because it's, it was called Peppermint Creek. It's still Pepper- around, but yeah. it's it's not like you know isolated anymore. Okay. I mean, I've always, I've always, uh, and and Scott's right. I mean, and I don't know if it's necessarily uh, COVID because this was sort of happening before then. But um, a lot of people, a lot more people are going camping now, which I think in one way is really great, but in another way, it's kind of you know. So, so, some of the people that are getting into it are, are not maybe as respectful of, of the land and as and of the other people. Um, whereas it used to be, you know, the people you find on the trail were, were all sort of very similar minded about, you know, uh, uh, being respectful. Um, and, and, and that's not, that's not over and beyond. It's not a terrible thing now. It's just, it's just every once in a while you run into that. Uh, and I think it's more often, but I typically, and lately, uh, I mean, when I was growing up, I did a lot of hiking, camping like a hike for days on end through trails in in the mountains um which you get away from people regardless and then uh more recently it's been more vehicular camping uh expedition type uh camping uh with a four-wheel drive vehicle and in a place where you can only get to it with with four-wheel drive and maybe a lifted vehicle and and there are some beautiful spots that that a lot of people like there's some that are actually easier to get to than others, but like there's one called uh, it's Coyote Flat and and um, it's kind of up just past Mount Whitney, but it's in the mountains and you have to go up a four wheel drive trail for for it takes about half a day to get up it, but once you're up there, you're at like twelve thousand wow. feet and there's wow. usually not that many other people up there, um, and it's beautiful. That that one's great because it's so close to LA in a way. Like it's you know it takes I mean maybe maybe three and a half hours to get to to Bishop and then it's another hour and a half to get up this trail to get up to the beautiful mountains and be away from everything. So that's four hours and that's really not that bad. Um, and then also there's a beautiful spot in Big Sur as well. That's kind of on, on a similar, it's, it's an off-road trail. And, um, but then there's some other places that I'm not going to mention because I, I know them and I've found them. And so we'll do another bold live, which is just Attaboy. about another bold live, just there about camping, just about camping. 
but not yeah. revealing our favorite spot. No, but I'd love like a like a behind yet. the scenes of you on your camping trip, like like seeing a, the whole the whole camping experience. Matthew's got equipment now. Next time we go camping, I'll just I'll just be like Matthew, yeah. film it, and and then he'll yeah, do it. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Scott. <laughs> Matt, yeah, just you see what do I did? It, I just, he'll do it. He'll just I just, do it. I just you offered just you up. You see what I did there? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, uh, gonna I'm going gonna, gonna to let you guys go because uh, we're taping five days next week and uh, you need to enjoy your weekend and then learn all your lines for next week, please. Yeah, I think we're in, I think we're both in like 10 episodes. You're in a lot. Or eight yeah. or 10. Yeah, yeah. we, we got a lot. It's going to be a lot. But, uh, but anyway. uh, on the memorization thing, uh, nah, I'm just going to show up and mac it up. <laughs> That's a great idea. Why don't we just improv the whole show? I think we should just, we should just make it up. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Smart move. Smart I mean, man. <clears throat> I'm not even going to learn Jeez, my stuff like, this oh, weekend. Stop it. All right. <laughs> Round of applause <laughs> for Matthew and Scott. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great weekend. And you, Casey. Thank you. Wonderful And you job. as well. Uh, and well, to all of you who stuck with us, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was our best bold life ever. All right. Bye, guys. I think so. <laughs> Bye. All right. Whew, we got through it. We got through that. And that. did you have fun? Um, I had fun. I was reading all your questions. Um, I saw a lot of questions, a lot of comments about, uh, Rena. Um, I would direct you to Rena's, uh, Instagram. She has, um, she's posted a lot of fun videos about, uh, bold and beautiful. So, um, I think any questions that you have, uh, be sure to check out, uh, Rena's Instagram. Um, Olivia. Yeah, that was totally fun. Uh, yeah, good. And the callers, good questions. Thank you guys. The chat was awesome. Uh, I see that we had a lot of viewers this whole show. Um, and I was going to try to invite Candace in if Candace is available to come in and say, hi, haven't talked to her for a couple of weeks. Cheryl, thank you. Nice seeing you. Oh, having Hunter Tylo. Hmm. That would be Hunter and Ron Moss. Yeah, that might be difficult, but, um, they, they, uh, definitely, definitely big part of the bold and beautiful history. Donna, great show. Thank you. Um, Joseph, thank you. Laura, just saying hi to you all. Pebbles. Hey, there's Candace. Candace. Hey. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. So how was your work week? Uh, it was, woo, it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so it, was, it was busy. We had, uh, some people call out <laughs> because of life. <laughs> so, but you know, as, as the old saying goes, the show must go on. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and remind everybody, what grade do you, do you teach? So I have the lovely kids who are one who is turning two. Who, and twos who are turning it to threes. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I have toddlers and twos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is a lot. That um, is a lot. <laughs> wait, what? One and two year olds? Yeah, I have. So I have some of the kids that are come that come to my class aren't really two yet. So they're like maybe two or three months away from being two. Oh my god. So goodness. and then I have some kids who are two who are gonna be turning three in the next, you know, couple of months. Okay. Oh yeah, Mona's correct to me. This is the daycare, not school. Let, well, here's the thing. We're we're the first school for these kids. So I kinda okay. I always get that sometimes it's like it's daycare, but we're an early learning center. So before regular school. We, you know, we're the, we're the, we're the starters. We're the first teachers. We're the first, you know, everything. So, yeah. There you go. We're, we're, the, cool, we're the cool, we're the cool ones. Well then, so when you need your escapism, you need your soap operas. I do. I do. Especially today because I actually had the day off today. All right. See? Nice. Friday's cliffhanger. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody saw it coming. No. I had the no. Day off. Candace got a day off. Woohoo! I got a day off on a Friday. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> um, so, what did you think of Matthew and Scott? Oh my! First and foremost, let me just say this: 
I respect them more than I have before because I I did post it. I didn't even know this was a thing that they said something about the podcast. I was just I was just just saying it. I you know right. um, because they are two adults. Let me preface that word a little bit more. Adults who come from different points of views in their lives. And they can actually have a conversation without the bickering and the fighting and everything that we're so in the world we're so used to. Um, when somebody has a difference of opinions, it's like round cat fight, you know. Or and so to see two adults having an adult conversation right. and know. respecting each other's values, that was good. They so, are an example. Wish we had more for, people like that. They're a good example for all of us to sort of. Exactly. Coexist in the same uh -huh. world, you know. Yeah, you can have difference of you can have difference of opinions. We all do, but yeah. the main thing is to respect each other. Yeah. And I think that's we haven't had that in a very long time. You know, that's just my opinion. Um. So. Respect and also listen. You know, it's like right. Listen to. You. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and then Candace, I I know this week was uh kind of a big shock for the soap community. Yeah. I it, it was a, it was a big shock because I actually had three people I lost this week. Oh my three goodness. people that I lost this week. I'm so sorry. So yeah. So thank you, but um yeah, you're right. Um Okay, I'm trying not to cry because I I'm still like kind of like everybody is still kind of processing it. Yeah. Um and for those who don't know, we're talking about N Nelson Branco who if you if you knew him you knew how how deep he was about the soap genre um how he just really loved this genre he really loved this this genre and um i i only met him like a couple of years ago on twitter cuz we've always been twitter friends but to say that he i mean he knew his stuff too you know, he knew his yep. stuff. Yep. Um, I mean, Casey, I mean, I don't, you know, you, you had a, probably a different, you guys had a different like relation or like, well, I no, I mean, I think anybody who's uh, on Twitter or in, in, in really heavy in um, soap operas has heard the name Nelson Branco. Yeah. He's uh, a journalist from uh, a Canadian journalist uh, out of Toronto. And, um, you know, was just super, you know, super smart about his, yeah. um, his assessment of this genre and actors and story. And, um, you know, I will, I think you would agree, Candace, he was a little controversial, you know? At times. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Just he was a little bit. <laughs> Look, everybody didn't have to agree with him. <laughs> he was fine with that, but woo. He, he he was he was definitely controversial in what he was saying, but but that, was that passion. Was, but you know, he was the kind of guy like when he commented that he enjoyed something. Like most recently, we, uh, he was we were DMing about uh, the Finn and Sheila and uh, yeah and uh, the Monte Carlo shows and he. Three. Sorry about that. Because it's really complimentary uh, things. And um, I just enjoyed really, you know, ch chatting with him. And, uh, you know, the last tech, the last DM I got from him was actually August 3rd. And I think that was when people started realizing that. Um, yeah. That uh, he so wasn't think, communicating. Yeah that, was, yeah, that was the same. Let me see. Actually, let me see. July, July 27th was the last time like really like us talking and august 3rd i reached out to him because anybody who follows me knows that i do twitter space like right now there is a memorial we're doing a memorial for nelson in a few minutes and he would always pop up in my twitter space and he would always you know dm me and saying why are you so cute like like i love you and everything because the ongoing joke was me and him we had a little soap opera of our own where I was the second wife. <laughs> but we like, you know, we, cause we respected each other and we, he would always say, how do you know so much about this and that and, and, and everything in between. But 
but yeah, like August 3rd, after that, because I, I can tell you one thing, when I didn't hear a, him say anything about the toe, mm. you know, stuff mm. like that, because I'm like, right. that that's, right. that's, that's up Nelson's alley right there. So, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just, he, he, he was a great guy. He was really a great guy and I'm going to miss the hell out of him. And I still can't believe it. I, I saw him trending. And I said, oh, now he's trending. Like, right. if, you know, he, if he was still with us, he would be mm -hmm. like, that's oh, me. Like me, I'm trending. Yes, Nelson, you're trending. And I, um, Mandy asked, uh, how did he pass away? And um, Michael Mooney uh, actually posted a, uh, a Twitter uh, thread about um, that. Okay. And uh, uh, I guess it was complications from seizures. And uh, yeah. that's just, um, you know, and a young guy. You know, so. yeah, he he, and he looked good for his age. <laughs> that was the joke too that we also had is that like we just we we look so good, you know, just, you know, no 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 plastic surgery here. But no, um, you know, that was the like, joke. You know, broad Broadway tips. Uh, you know, dims its lights when they lose somebody. You know, it's almost like the the soap community. Yeah. Would, you know, tip our hat to um him again. Like I said, very controversial in his viewpoints, and um, you know. Like I, I was, I was messaging someone, love him or hate him. You know, he was Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, I mean, the only thing I can sum up is, is that for everybody who knew him, you knew that even if he, if y'all had a, a moment, he still loved you. He would, he would still be there for you. He would support you from way, way in the back row somewhere. And because when he found out about, you know, with me and, and my online, you know, my audio podcast and everything, he was like, look at you making your dreams come true. He even, he even like was in the chat. Like when, when we first started Bold Live, yep. he was always in the chat mm -hmm. and he would always be on me telling me what I need to do and how to do things. And he was just like, he was just so proud of you, Casey, too. And he was yeah. just proud of everybody. Every, he was yeah. just, he really... You know, I know people say that I'm the cheerleader of this genre, but Casey was yeah. like, Casey, yeah. you already know Nelson was like, right. I mean, if this was like the the after school club, yeah, well, he would be president. And, and I mean, and you read so many, so many, so many actors from uh, this industry posting, yeah. you know, condolences and, and stories about Nelson and. Uh, you know, there's just just a reminder that if there's, you know, someone you love, you know, and appreciate, tell them because you never know. Every day is a gift, right? Every day. And, you know, look, in this world, I know there, so there's a lot going on, but kind of squash the petty little things. Yeah. Because, you, you know, like I said, I lost three people this week. You never know. So you might want to just, you know, reach out to somebody and say, hey, and I love what Matthew said to everybody is that, hey, you know, reach out like, you know, we're all in this together. You know, just just call somebody, talk to them, find out how they're doing, you know, and 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 for those who are dealing with health issues, please make sure you're getting yourself checked out. Make sure you're following the doctor's orders and everything else like that, because. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, trying really hard not to cry on this. Well, Candace, <laughs> I, I do appreciate you coming on tonight, and I know Nelson's looking no down, and he's proud of you too for all that you've done. And Nelson's probably like this girl. If you don't try not to cry and ruin your mascara, you know darn good well you pay too much money for that mascara. <laughs> <laughs> he really would. He actually probably would have said that. Yeah. So, you know. But yeah, just, just, you know, yeah. Well, uh, so what do you, you're going to do a Twitter space now? Yeah, we're doing Twitter. This is going on right now. Um, okay, so if you're so watching this live, how can people, because we're going to close this out, people call. No, 
Okay, so if you guys follow me on Twitter at Candy Pooh on Twitter or my friend Casey, my other friend Casey, I have so many Casey's in my life. Um, Casey S. Hutchins, Hutchins on Twitter. Um, we're doing it right now. Actually, it's starting right now. Come over, listen to some stories. Um, probably going to be talking about soaps too because that's what Nelson would want us to do as well. Um, but, you know, we're just, you know, sharing our memories and our thoughts and our love for him and you know, somebody said this, there's never going to be another Nelson. No. Nope. Never. No. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> One of a kind. One of a kind. One of a kind. He was definitely that. I, yeah. So, you know, my heart goes out to his family and to his yep. friends and colleagues yep. and everybody, like I said, everybody who knew him. If you if you knew him from, from social media, you understand what kind of man he was. And like I said, there was the good, there was the bad, there was the in-between. But at the end of the day, he respected the heck out of this genre. He wanted nothing but the best for this genre and for everybody around it. So, Well, <sighs> Candace, if we, if I could give you a hug, I'm giving you a virtual hug. Yeah, I mm. Thank you. And, no um, problem. All right. I love you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Love you too. Love you all guys. Right. All right, bye. Bye bye. All right. Well, on that note, guys, I'm going to close out the show. I really appreciate all your feedback, all your comments. You guys are awesome, very kind. Um, and uh, if you want to connect with me on social media, you can certainly do that anytime you'd like on Instagram, uh, Casey Cass, or on Twitter at Casey Kasperzik. Um, that is my full name there. Um, and yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to talk with you guys some more. Um, I wish you all a great rest of your uh, Friday, and until next time, be bold, be beautiful, and be back next week for an all new show. And our guests will be announced later this next week on our uh, Twitter Bold Insider. Thank you and good night, everybody. So that's it. That is all, Katie. All right. Bye bye.